So first we're going to talk about the four different categories of hands that are good candidates for four betting. The first, and probably most obvious category, are the aces. Now, something I want to point out is that unless mentioned otherwise, this entire lesson focuses on four betting at 100 bid blind stacks. I'm definitely not saying that four betting or knowing when to four bet at other stack levels isn't important, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to focus on the most common stack size you'll be playing with for online six max. Anyway, regardless of whether you're in position or out of position, if someone three bets you full pot when you have aces, you should always be four betting full pot for a few different reasons. First, even though it's rare, people will fold your four bets, which is fine, because remember that equities run a, a lot closer together in PLO. So preventing them from realizing their equity and picking, picking up some dead money in the process is definitely a victory. And especially with weak aces, since their equity distribution is pretty polarized, they don't have very much post-flop playability, particularly when you're out of position in a three bet pot. And four betting to 35 big blinds leaves you with an SPR of about one, which gives you a chance to pot any flop and get the money in quick which if you, if you remember from lesson two, is exactly what you're looking for when you're out of position. The next category of hands that are ideal for four betting are pocket kings, especially pocket kings with an ace blocker. Now, pocket kings are the only non-aces hands that have an equity edge against an opponent whose three betting range is between eight and 12%. To be specific, ace king king x has a 55 to 60% equity edge against an 8% three betting range and a more than 60% equity edge against a 12% three betting range. But just because most king's hands have an equity edge against this range doesn't mean that you should treat them like aces and auto four bet them anytime an aggressive player three bets you. In fact, you should probably just fold your weaker kings to a three bet if you don't have an ace blocker because they have even less post flop playability than weak aces and since you don't have an ace in your hand, it's more likely that your opponent does, which means that on ace high boards, you won't take it down with a c bet as easily because most players will stack off if they flop a pair of aces anyway. Plus. Not having an ace blocker increases the likelihood that they're three betting with aces. After all, even aggressive players show up with good hands sometimes, right? Now, besides four betting the kings with an ace blocker, you should also four bet the kings that have a lot of connectedness and suitedness. These are much better for four betting than weaker kings, because they're much smoother and are more likely to dominate our opponent's draws post flop. And something I want to point out, and we talked about this in the previous lesson on three betting is that it's really important to pay attention to who the player is 3-betting you and what their ranges are really like before you consider 4-betting them light. I can't tell you how many times I've seen students put a light 4-bet on someone that's only 3-betting them like 4% or less in the first place. Don't make this mistake, because getting stacks in with 35-40% to 40 equity will add up really quickly. Go through your database and pick apart people's ranges if you have to. An easy example is if you notice that someone is 3-betting a much higher percentage of the time from the button when you open the cutoff then put in a light 4-bet to keep them in check. But on the other hand, if you notice that their 3-betting range out of the blinds is really tight, well then you can either fold or just call depending on what your hand is. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Alright, the third category of hands that are ideal to 4-bet an aggressive 3-better are strong ace-high hands. Now, these hands don't necessarily have an equity edge against the same 8 and 12% three betting ranges we used in the previous slide, but they can be profitable four bets for two reasons. First, it can force your opponent to make a mistake, because against someone who's going to three bet and fold to a four bet with hands like single or even double suited kings, four betting with a slight equity disadvantage is profitable because the money we win when he incorrectly folds significantly outweighs the loss of when he calls or gets his stack in. The last category of hands to 4-bet light with are double-suited connectors, and they're mainly profitable 4-bets for the same reasons we said that the strong ace-high rundowns were. Again, players will fold to your 4-bet some of the time. They're very smooth, and if your opponent doesn't have an ace, they'll give up really easily on ace-high boards. Plus, remember that when you 4-bet, people will put you squarely on aces, which is why it's good to 4-bet wider against the habitual 3-betters. Because if they're 3-betting a wider range of, say, 12% or so, then if you 4-bet the bigger double-suited rundowns, you dominate their 4-bet calling range. And let me ask you a question. What's the most fun thing you can do in poker? Bust aces, right? So when you 4-bet someone, they start licking their chops and drooling on themselves, thinking they're about to bust you. But in reality, you're owning them, because when you flop a piece with these type of hands, they'll oftentimes get their money in very bad against you post-flop, since the majority of hands that like to 3-bet and call 4-bets are the middle rundown type hands. To put it more simply, you're fine with them folding, but in many instances, against a calling range, you're practically 4-betting for sheer value. 
Plus, and perhaps most importantly, 4-betting light is definitely a deceptive play. And if someone sees you 4-bet a non-aces hand, they'll definitely take a note on it, which means they're much more likely to incorrectly stack off the times you 4-bet and actually do have aces. Hey, what's going on guys? Casino Crime here. Now if you like this video and you want more, then go ahead and click the subscribe button below right now. And if you want to join me for more of my 6 max success secrets and free video tutorials, just click the link to the right. See you inside the trainings. Good luck.